I mean, I really do believe in what this country is supposed to stand for. I really do. Um, my first campaign here in this state, I'd never run for office. My first campaign for the Senate in a contested primary against an incumbent, well, a public, um, wealthy uh, incumbent, cost $350,000. Average contribution, $17. <laughs> Most people aren't willing to do Since that. Since a Senate race now in this state costs 10 to 15 million, 12 or 15 million. So cost of campaigns. Second, uh, the rise of the uh, partisan media. We are old enough to remem remember Walter Cronkite, big figure journalist. And then about the mid 80s, a man arrived on our shores who began to buy newspapers and radio and television stations and his name was Rupert Murdoch. And Rupert Murdoch set out to do two things that he did in England. Um, corrupt a very good media press corps and um, tilt the political equation to the right. He did it in England, he came here and has done the same thing. And um, if you add the cost of campaigning, the rise of the partisan media, uh, the, the corruption of our political system by lobbying, and the connection between the cost of campaigning and, uh, and fundraising, and access to special interest groups. It has driven, and then I'd add a, a, a final factor that out of my personal experience, of a um, sensationalist intrusive media. People of quality don't want to run for office anymore. Now, we, I have to say, this state is an exception. The two senators we have in this state are among the best. Mm -hmm. But having said that, that's not a very high standard these days. <laughs> well, it's not a lot, it's, the Senate I served in in the 70s was full of big figures on both sides of the aisle. I could name names, but again, you're all too young to remember. They were big figures. And if I look at them, not one of them would have put up today with what you have to put up with to hold office. And I worry about Mark Udall and I worry about Michael Bennett because they're people of very high quality. And they tell me I've got to raise money all the time. Uh, and, and this, it, it is a corrupt system. Now it's corrupt, back to my original theme, and I'll end on this, in the traditional Republican sense, small r. The ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans said a republic demanded citizen participation it's, a republic will not survive unless the people participate. It has to um, observe popular sovereignty. There is no king, there is no uh, prime minister. The people are sovereign, the people have the power. And the third factor was, uh, well, the third factor was the sense of the commonwealth the community of Boulder. What's good for the community of Boulder? Not, not one part of that community or another part, but the community of Boulder. And then finally, resistance to corruption. And they did not define corruption as money under the table. I'm talking about the Greeks and the Romans here and the founders of this country. They said corruption sets into the Republic when people in power begin to put special interests ahead of the common interest, the common good. And if you use that classic definition of corruption, this country is a massively corrupt republic. I wish you all very well. Thank you. Thank you.